Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today we're going to be doing some Pinguicula leaf pullings for propagation. I haven't done a video like this in a while, so I just kind of wanted to show you what I was doing here, how I propagate Pinguicula with leaf pullings. We're going to be pulling some of the leaves off these and setting them up so that we can get some new baby plants growing. I'm hoping to start selling these pretty soon. I'm starting to build up my collection a little bit and hopefully before too long I'll have enough to be able to start really selling these. All right, let's get things started here with my uh, Lawiana Amarganata. You can see I have a lot of leaves growing off of this one here. This one's been growing in a windowsill, so it's kept kind of its green coloration. These will actually get a little bit purple on, and pink on the outside under a little bit stronger lights. We're getting closer to winter now, so unfortunately the lights are the light is getting lower in the windowsill. So I might actually move this over to my grow tent where I've got some lights and uh, maybe get this to color up a little bit better after I do this. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you kind of two different ways you can get these pullings. The first way here is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. If you don't really don't wanna disturb the plant much and you wanna get some pullings, the best way to do it is to simply just find a leaf that's kind of underneath. I don't like taking from the top because I don't like the way it hurts the aesthetics of the plant. And you don't wanna to take too many leaves, but what I like to do is see how this one here is kind of tucked underneath right there, but it's still healthy. I like to look for those kind of leaves if I'm not going to disturb the plant. So I'll kind of grab the leaf, just kind of give it a tug. It's, it's a little tricky because they're slimy because they got the, looks, look I got two on that one. So let's see. So I got two leaves. I didn't intend to, but there's two there. They do have the little bit of dew on the outside of them. So they're a little bit slimy. So it can be kind of hard to get a grip on them. But what you want to do is you want to get as much of that white part off as possible because that's usually where your growth point is going to start. So right about there, is, th th those are two good leaves. Those will probably both produce a, uh, a start or a propagation. So let's go ahead and put those aside real quick. So that's one way to do it. You can kind of go around your entire plant and kind of pull from underneath. You can see there's lots of leaves. If you look under there, there's usually lots of leaves underneath. Let's see if I can get a good look here. Under there, you can see there's definitely leaves to be plucked. If you want to go that route, you kind of just go through the whole plan, just delicately remove as many leaves as you can. The other way to do this is, and this is probably the easiest way, is if you're ready to repot these, you can see this one's getting crowded. I got one plant here, one growth point, and then I got another one kind of shooting out the side over here. This one looks like it's, it's big enough to start kind of sustaining its own planter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull these ones off of here and leave one on and then kind of take the other one and uh, put it in its own planter. But what that does is it makes it really, really easy to get under here and to get some extra pulling. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So there we go. So I pulled it out. The nice thing about pings, I'm gonna flip this over here, is there, you can see that the, the root system is incredibly shallow. These are actually flower stalks. Those aren't roots. Those are flowers that have kind of grown and then died. But you can see that the root system here is really, really shallow. So you really don't need a deep hole or, or a deep planter to, to pot these uh the pinguicula and they can grow kind of right on the surface of very minimal amounts of soil and then once you get them like this they're fairly easy you have to be real delicate because they are super delicate but once you get them to here you can kind of start to just pull them apart at least i hope so let's see let's get these ones apart here there we go see you can see the root system there kind of separating and now we got kind of i'll leave this one here where it's been growing. And then I'm gonna take this one here and give it its new new home. What I'm gonna do before I do that is I'm gonna peel off some of this dead stuff on the bottom here because this stuff on the bottom is not very good for the plant. It can kind of rot. But while I'm doing that, I'm definitely gonna pull off some more leaves for propagating. See, there's a dead one. Can't do much with that. If a leaf is looks like it's halfway dead and you're not sure if it's gonna give you one, I would say just try it. Those ones are probably about 50-50, whether or not they'll hit. You can see here, there's two good ones there. So we'll get those. And these ones here are all just kind of dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one. I'll pull this one here, this bottom one. But I'm gonna leave this the way it is now. And maybe we'll go one more, because that one's just kind of hanging off. And then uh, I'll repot this into its own planter. And then I can kind of do the same thing with this one that I put back, you can see there's lots under here that we could potentially pull. So I'll get this one here, looks pretty good. Get that one. There's 
a nice one. That one, see this one's kind of light and like closer to being dead. That's kind of a 50-50 one. Definitely gonna give it a shot. Here's one that's definitely coming off. So we'll take that one off. So I think that looks pretty good. I don't wanna do, oh, here's a couple right here actually. I don't know if you can see that. I'll take both of those. There we go, there. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this, put it back in its planner. I'll leave that one where it was. And I'll repot these a little bit better. This isn't a repotting video, so I just kind of want to show you how I do the pullings. So if you're ready to repot these and move them, that's kind of a good way to do it because you can get underneath the plant instead of trying to pull them from a plant that's in its planter. You can just flip it over and then just start pulling them from the bottom side. So we'll get these potted up here after I'm done with the video. But there we go. So what we got several pullings there. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. So those are 13, 14, 15 pollings that could potentially generate brand new plants. So the hit rate's pretty clean on these. So a lot of times you'll get a hit on almost all of these. Let's go ahead and get to the next plant. Okay, so here is my Cyclosecta, which is beautiful. This one has been under grow lights and you can see the edge of the leaves have turned a really beautiful purple and the inside stays kind of a, a greenish color. And I'm actually not quite ready to repot these. So I'm not gonna be using that method for these. I'm actually just gonna be pulling the leaves directly from the bottom so that I can propagate some of these. So I'm kind of looking around here for some prospects. I can see this leaf under here is getting kind of crowded. It looks like it might be getting close to dying, so I'm gonna definitely go for that one. So let's see if we can get under here, get a good grip on the leaf. And I usually try to hold the plant back just a little bit so it doesn't pull the whole plant, and there we go. Nice little cyclosecta leaf for propagation. Let's see what else we have here. I won't be able to get as many off of this one because this plant isn't nearly as robust as my Lauiana Amarganata, but we're gonna try to get at least a few here. There's another one. There we go. You can see that one, that one's a little bit closer to dying, so I don't know if that one's gonna hit, but we're gonna give it a try. It looks like it has maybe just enough life left in it to get a hit. All right, let's see what else we have here. Here's one, see this one under here, under there. I'm gonna try to get that one. That one might be a little bit closer to its yeah, that one's not gonna cut it. You can say I could probably give it a try and cross my fingers, but I doubt that one's going to generate anything. So let's see here. There's a nice big one here that's pretty healthy. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this one off. There we go, There's a nice one. There we go, nice little pulling. I don't know if I wanna do too many more. It's already starting to look just a little shabby. So I think we'll probably leave this and go with, actually no, let's just do one more. Pull this one here. There we go, just so that we have three. There we go, there's three, or potentially four cyclosecta pulling. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over. And as you can see there, I got my four pullings. This one's iffy, these three all should hit. Um, they should be good to go. So, also stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be showing you actually where I put these and how I actually propagate them. So I'm not just pulling today, I'm actually gonna show you how I put these in my little humidity dome type situation and uh, get these to actually hit. And uh, also make sure to like and subscribe because I'm going to be giving updates on all of these. So kind of show you what the process looks like probably in a couple of weeks to give you kind of an idea of what to look like, what it looks like and what to expect so that you can maybe do this on your own someday. Pinguiculas are one of the easier plants to propagate because the leaf pullings are easy to get and uh, you got a really high successful hit rate with these. So strongly suggest doing this if you have some pings, but make sure to like, subscribe, that stuff helps me out. I really appreciate it. All right, I wanna show you how you can get your hands on some pings of your very own. Check the description, I might be selling my own. If not, I also have a link in the description where you can get some California carnivores. Uh, check this out. I'm so excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They are one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year-round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, they have been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R, Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and head on back to the video. But let's go ahead and take a look at my Sethos here. This is kind of one of my mother trays of my Sethos. 
These are all ones that um, have been kind of growing by themselves. I've been let, letting them grow out so that I could use them for specifically for propagations. They've been under a grow light and you can see they're just absolutely beautiful. These are one of my favorite pings and they're super easy to propagate. I just love the green and pink. These will tend to be a little more green on a windowsill and then a lot more pink when under a grow light. You can see these have been kept under a grow light. So they're, they've got that really, really beautiful kind of pink tint to them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift a couple of these up and see if we can get some pollings for my Sethos collection. That I, I have more of these pink Sethos than I do of any other plant and I'm probably close to selling these. Might be doing that here pretty soon. I have some updates I need to make to my website. I have to incorporate the store and that kind of stuff, but keep your eyes open for my announcement. I'm hoping to be selling these here really soon, actually probably in the next month or two, but um, great plant to have over the winter as well. They do go into like kind of a succulent stage where they don't grow, grow quite as crazy as they do during the summer. Um, but they do grow year round. They don't have to go into any dormancy or anything. You can just keep them on your windowsill and uh, keep them watered and they go, they grow really well water a little less during the winter than you would during the summer. But they're a really cool windowsill plant. They're really pretty easy to take care of, in my opinion, compared to most carnivorous plants. And uh, you can see these do, these don't have any on right here because I don't have any gnats currently in my grow temp. These will catch insects on their leaves. Uh, they're especially good at catching gnats. So if you have a little bit of a gnat problem like in your kitchen or something, they do an awesome job of catching gnats. But let's go ahead and lift this first one up here. Again, these are the same type of plant, so they have a very shallow root system. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over for you so you can see how shallow the roots are there. Almost no roots. So now I'm just gonna start pulling some of these under leaves. There we go, there's one. Don't want to thin it out too much, but it looks like there's another one right here. Okay, then I'm just going to kind of rinse and repeat that process for a few of these until I get as many pullings that I am looking to get. When you're doing this process, you're going to have some leaves fall off. That's perfectly fine. If a leaf falls off, go ahead and just put it in your propagation pile. That's perfectly normal. These plants are fairly tolerant as long as you're not too rough on them. Oh, this one looks like we got a little, got a little passenger here. Let's go ahead and move, separate and move it. It can be real slimy sometimes, and sometimes you even break the leaf a little bit. That's perfectly okay. Those have less of a chance to hit if you break the leaf, but I still have them hit fairly frequently, so don't give up on it even if you break the leaf a little bit. Go. I'll try to spray these off a little later with my mister so that I can uh, make sure I keep these kind of clean and nice looking but you can see that they look a little more thin but it almost doesn't look like anything's really changed because I'm just pulling the leaves from the underside so I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there um, from a videoing perspective I might pull some more in a little bit but I'm gonna show you kind of how I put these on my tray and how I get them set up and ready to go for propagation okay so what I have here is just an aluminum tray from the dollar store, Walmart, whatever, just something super simple. It has a lid so I can keep some humidity in there. I like the see-through ones so that I can keep an eye on them. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually line this with a paper towel, real simple, just something like this. I, I like to line it with a paper towel because the paper towel absorbs water really well so the water kind of sticks in there better than if you were just to leave it like on a hard surface. I don't know if it would really work on a hard surface so definitely wanna make sure to lay down either a paper towel or a, tw a towel, something that can hold and absorb water. Uh, while you have the lid on so that these have a water source. And then what I'm gonna do is move our propagations in here. So there we go. So then after, once you get these all kind of laid in here, like so, I'm gonna actually probably do a little bit more pullings just because I have more room in here. But just for this video's purpose, I'm gonna show you kind of what I would do to prep it and get it ready. So I'm gonna get my handy dandy mister here. One of my favorite plant accessories, my cord gear mister. I love this guy. Link in the description for one of these if you wanna get your hands on one. I really like it, especially in the summer. It's insulated, has this little insulation thing on it, which is really cool. But yeah, so let's go ahead and we're gonna mist. We're gonna soak that paper towel, but not too much. 
So we want to make sure that there, this paper towel is pretty wet, but we don't want the water puddling up down there. We don't want there to be like water in the bottom sitting because then that can rot these out. But what you do want is you want this paper towel to be pretty dang wet so that you get water in there for a week or two without really needing to do much. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our little humidity dome on here, like so. And then you're gonna put this under a grow light or you're gonna put this in a windowsill. I usually use a windowsill just because it, sometimes I think the temperatures get a little too hot. If you are gonna put this under a grow light, it might be a good idea to maybe put a hole or two in here just so you have some ventilation so it doesn't get too hot in there. Uh, but, but essentially after a few weeks, these are going to start to grow. So like I said, make sure and subscribe to my channel uh, so that you, when I do an update video on these here in two, three, maybe four weeks, depending on how well they do, I can give you an update and show you exactly what to expect, what they're gonna look like. Uh, make sure to check my store. If it's up and running, it's not yet, but it, it might be by the time you watch this. So look in the description, check my store. If not, California Carnivores does sell these. You can use my code Bug Eater to get your hands on some and get those from California Carnivores. They have a massive selection of beautiful pings, a lot more than what you see here. So again, Bug Eater to get 10% off that order. If you're interested in growing your own pinguicula, check out the video popping up on the screen right now. It's a full care instruction video so you can become a master ping grower yourself.